lot like instructional design, but I never would have known it until I threw myself into it, which was called Solutions Marketing. And Solutions Marketing and working with sales organizations to help them get smart about what they're doing when you actually strip down what's going on, the reality is, is that the same process models that we use in instructional design are the same types of processes that are used in lots of other parts of your organization. It's just that if you don't call it ID, and you call it sales training, or you call it project management, or you call it solutions marketing, you find that the messages that you have are carried to very different people and the results end up being the same. However, for those of us who are instructional designers, we do find that there are things that we have to have in common. We want to be able to know them when we see them. So what we talked about putting the session together was, well, you know, we kind of need to talk about those academic groups a little bit, except everybody thinks, well, why do we have to do the history? Why is it that we always have to start with the history? And I will tell you why we do. And I'm going to shift into a presentation here, which is a format called uh, Pachupacha. And some of you might be familiar with Pachupacha. And I'm going to set this up. I can't turn this on until I'm ready to actually go, because what happens here is that I have 20 slides, 20 seconds per slide. So I'm going to be done with this in six minutes and 40 seconds. And what we're going to do, I will start this now. This is the hoot nanny part. This is the hoot nanny part, although I'm not going to be singing and dancing. What I'm going to do is to talk to you about something that I have laughably referred to as the secret handshakes of ID. And the reason that this is important is that no matter how you come up in this industry, there are going to be points at which you are going to have to talk to other people who are sort of like you and you're going to have to know how to talk to them. Now, the reason I think you should listen to what I have to say to you is that, in fact, I have had to be that Wonder Woman who has done everything. I have done this from the academic side. I have done this from the corporate side. I've done it from the small business side. And the reality is, is that when you take yourself out of a particular practice and you take the skills into those other places, you do have to recognize the commonalities among them. And it was with that shock I realized that we only talk to ourselves, we only know this much. We figure out how to take what we do and look outside, we have a bigger audience, but we still have to recognize each other. And that ends up being somewhat more challenging. So in my world, I wanted to take a look, well, what is it that we do have in common? What we have in common is that we call ourselves IDs. Even if our jobs don't call us IDs, we call ourselves IDs, so we sort of know each other when we see each other. We develop solutions. We train people. We inform people. We support their performance. We try to make them better at what they do. And I lost my points because I'm not talking fast enough. The one thing that we have to figure out is how we know them when we see them. And so what I want to do is to give you this crash course. Because if you don't know some of these things, when you start talking to other people, they will know that you don't know. And as much as it sounds goofy, People will think you're not very smart if you don't know the secret handshake. So one of the things we wanted to talk about is where ID come from, and it comes from lots of different places. It comes from academia. It comes from the military's use of trying to get armed forces trained quickly to do work. It comes from the computer sciences. It comes from learning and cognition. So there are multiple, multiple foundations for our work. Now, I will tell you the one thing that all IDs love. We love learning theories. We love to talk about ourselves as learning professionals, and in fact, we are, although many of us don't have that much exposure to true cognitive psychological principles. We extract the things that work in our practices and move ahead. So the idea of speaking of ourselves and having theoretical knowledge, here are some theories you should probably know about. You can drop these words into conversation. I would suggest that what you do is to do a little bit of work before you drop them into conversation. But seriously, there are times I have found myself in meetings where you can sort of mutter to yourself, well, that sounds like a, a constructivistic paradigm approach, and people go, ooh, okay. And they may not do it that way, but they know that you're smart about what you're doing. There are also some names to drop. Most of us know a lot of the ID theorists. Steve, stop laughing. <laughs> But what you need to know is that there are lots and lots and lots of people who've actually done learning, not design, and you need to drop those names into your practice too. We come to instructional design models. Most of us love models. We love them because we think they're checklists. We forgot that most instructional design models were notes that other instructional designers passed to one another to describe how they do their work. 
So whether you like models or not, you need to understand, we can think Addy is dead, but Addy's not dead. Addy is going to be with us forever because it is a simple process model that anybody can understand. So I think it's great that we're going to have Addy too, maybe, maybe not. This is not an instructional design model so much as it is a process model. But knowing how this works is important, and let me show you why. You can think she's dead, but very large associations like ASTD have entire curricula, which are in fact advertised as being based on the Addy model. And so even if you don't think it's the best one, if you think that HPT is a better model, that's great. No one's going to know that one. They will know this one. So this is a secret handshake. Even companies like Adobe, where I've worked for a number of years, you think we weren't trying to make sure we could speak to the instructional design community more effectively? We took the Addy model, we started layering all the products to show where the products could be used across the design cycle. Again, we were less interested in doing instructional design, but showing people who did this work in their, in their work processes how the products would fit. So, lest you think that there are only the Addy models, there are over a hundred. There are over 100. I think I analyzed, well, more, even more now. Back when I was in graduate school, back in the very, very old days, I had to analyze 50 models to see what the patterns were. That's when I realized, oh, this is nothing but secret handshakes back and forth. So let me just tell you that there are lots of models. But when you go back to the process model of Addy, there are things important. I love something that Cammy said the other day, that in Addy, if you take the A and the E away, what do you have? You have died. <laughs> and I thought that that was great, because I think in my world, if you cannot analyze where you're going, and you cannot assume that you have been handed good information, if you can't start with the baseline and measure the effect, you're not going to get anything done that you want. But you have to also remember that design is the thing that most of us have gravitated toward, to be able to really be creative. This is where the creative energy of creating the foundation for doing interesting things comes from. Now, many of us working in design see ourselves as the artists. And in fact, this is where the stuff gets very pretty. So I did want to have at least one shot that, yeah, most of us have these creative souls that want to be fed. And in fact, design, I mean, we like calling ourselves designers because it sounds like creative people. It's very difficult to say, yes, I'm an analyst. Oh, she's a numbers girl. Designer, it's like you see the world in a very different visionary way. Now, development in our world have changed. It used to be that we could be the developers because we would design our storyboards and then we would have to go and create the stuff that we worked with. One of the interesting things where new skills are coming together in our world is that you need people who have skills to make the stuff work in ways that most of us never imagined. When you have to start dealing with distribution in ways that we hadn't before. And it pushes us into the idea of doing the heavy block and tackle work of taking the pieces that have been designed by other people and putting it into something that works. This is the hardest piece of all because the joy of creating a beautiful piece of instruction doesn't mean buckus if you can't take that, put it into a system and have people actually get something out of it where they feel better. So I think that what we're finding right now is that we used to tell people what to do and when to do it, and then we would create the things that would need to be done, but we were in the craft model of work, and now we're finding that our world, the good news for all of us is that our profession has reached a point where we need to get smarter about how we go forth. And there you have the history of ID in six minutes and 40 seconds. Woo!